Welcome to the Windy City Benders Podcast, presented by Beer League Talk, with your hosts, Noe, Poetsy, Jerem, and Tanner. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode 56, the Gustafson of the Windy City Benders Podcast, presented to you by Beer League Talk. Boy, that's fun to say, even though I need like an extra breath for it. Or I'm just out of shape and it's early in the morning. I don't know. We'll see. We'll little find a, out little this podcast B. goes along. Uh, yeah. But in any case, uh, we are here early in the morning on Sunday. Uh, you have your host, me, Poets. Hi. Uh, as well as, as Jerem. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> We're tired. And we've got Tanner downtown. How are you, Tanner? Ah, uh, fantastic! How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Doing just fine. We are down one member today. Uh, Noli is out in Tennessee uh, visiting some family, so um, he is uh, he is absent for today. But we'll get by. We'll just uh, talk a little less about the Leafs today. Mm. I think that's how we'll get by. So um, recorded early in the week, so we got uh, a lot done there. So it's not going to be as long of a podcast, but um, still going to give you guys some pretty good stuff, some updates with what's going on in the playoffs. But I guess we'll start with a little bit of a uh, talk with Tanner. Um, let's talk about uh, the Russian guy that the Hawks are looking to sign. And there's a couple pretty decent connections to the Hawks, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, his name is Ilya Mikheyev. Hey! Uh, it's if you want to know how it's spelled, it's M I K H E Y E V. So that's what I'm going with. <laughs> huh. um, but yeah, he, like don't know much about him, but I know there's a bunch of teams that are going to be in the hunt to try and get him. And I know like if the Hawks are trying to get him, like they have really good European scouts, so it's probably a good situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, his stats are, look pretty good, like. His pet, this past season, he was in the, I mean, he's in the KHL. He was playing for um, Avangard Omsk. I don't know how, exactly how to call that team. That's really just awkward, by the way. <laughs> or Omsk Avangard. Uh, but in 62 games, he had 45. I'm pretty sure it's. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to pronounce it Avengers. It's Avengers End Game. Uh, ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. He had, he had 23 goals and 22 assists. And uh, the year before, 54 games, 19 goals, 19 assists, 38 points. The year before that, 56 games, 12 goals, 7 assists. So he's been progressing very well. He's like tw- he's only like 24 years old. Um, we're just talking about like some of the guys that like people might know that are on the team. Like I did say, he led the team. Uh, but Evgeny Medvedev. He was in the NHL for a little bit. I think he, yeah, he was over in uh, like Philadelphia like a couple of years mm-hmm. ago. He's 36, so like he's been around for a minute. David DeHarnay, he's on the squad. Uh, former Blackhawks Cody Franson and Billy Polka. Um, Is Polka oh, really a former Blackhawk though? What's up? You mean former Rock, yeah, Rockford Ice Hog? Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> he was on the team for maybe a game or something. Uh, Alexi Emelin was over there too. Victor Stahlberg, I just noticed that. Maxime Talbot, huh? Yeah, but you know, Good Lord. the biggest, uh, the biggest Blackhawk of all on the team, uh, Chris Versteeg. He's on that squad, and uh, he was no one the lead. He only played eleven games though, and had five points. Yeah, so <laughs> not too shabby. A lot of a lot of names, you know. Yeah, a lot of a lot of names. Um, no, good point that you brought up there was that, um, you know, the Hawk Scouts, um, they do very well with the European market, looking at the Russians, looking at the Swedes, looking at the Finns. Um, they do really, really well over there. So I'm, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about this kid, especially if he let his team in points. Uh, I guess my only concern would be where would he slot in the lineup? You know, is he the kind of guy that's going to end up playing with Taze at some point? Or because, you know, we've already got that Strom line all figured out. Uh, that third line doesn't really look all that terrible. 
Uh, I mean, an Easton Wap's going to end up getting replaced at some point, but, you know, that's not really a, a big issue or anything like that. Uh, and if he leads his team in points out in Russia, I don't think we want him on the fourth line. So, you know, really, where where would he slot? You know, it's it may be like you try him out like how you had Panarin, just like alongside Kane. It may be like Kajula doesn't on that first line anymore, you know, like you got Taves, Kane, and Mikheyev. It's kind of crazy that it's getting to the point where the Hawks can possibly keep Kane and Taves together because their second and third line are going to be solid enough not to need one of them. Oh, they haven't the issue, yeah. the issue before with having Taves and Kane together was that they just didn't perform well yeah. together. Yeah, but they were always... You know, like, it wasn't that they, they couldn't play together. Yeah, but they were always like the new like, plan of like if the team's losing, it's like, all right, Taves, Kane, get out there. And you're out there until we tie it up or win. Like, well, yeah, but that that happened like with like the last five minutes of a game, or like if like they were down like by four in the second. Like it was crazy situations like that. It wasn't like a all right. Here's how we're going to start the game. We're going to have Taves, Kane, and Hosa start the game off. You know, um, it wasn't anything like that ever. So um, it would be interesting to see kind of how that ends up panning out if they give it a little bit more of a trial run rather than just like, you know, 10 minutes of a game and seeing that it's not working and going, Nope, that's it. We're done. Yeah. That's, that's out. Yeah. Allow well, the chemistry to kind of build instead of just being mm-hmm. like, it's not immediate. So let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And maybe just maybe we'll get another one of Jonathan Tay's stories about how he and Patrick Kane just yell at each other on the ice during a five on three power play because that was hilarious. That's one of my favorite stories of all time. That's the best. Um, you Can mentioned we... it, uh, <laughs> give me a puck. You know what I said because it was, I'm pretty sure it was on a kid's panel. <laughs> trying not to swear. Uh, um, Tanner mentioned that uh, Chris Versteeg, uh, Chris Versteeg is back for his, what is it, his fourth stint now? 12th, 19th. I don't know. This is yearly student. Yeah. He is back in the Black Hawk organization. I thought it was interesting that he didn't actually sign with the Hawks. He yeah. signed with the Rockford Ice Hawks, uh, Hawks AHL affiliate. So um, it's kind of like the same uh, thing that all those 2010 guys did with the Wolves. They signed directly with the Wolves to come back to Chicago. Yeah. Well, it, from what I was reading, though, they're almost looking to him to play a little bit more of like a development role in some of these young guys. And I, I'm sitting there reading it. And I'm going, isn't there like a better option for an old <laughs> player to bring back? Like, hey, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, Chris Rustiga, he's a great guy and he's, you know, a lot of fun to uh, kind of be around, I bet. But I'm not sure if he's somebody that I want, like, teaching my younger players you know what i mean i mean he's been around the nhl though like he's played for eight nhl teams jesus he's only 32 (laughs) so that's 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 getting around a little bit also he's a great rapper yeah (laughs) (laughs) they just signed him actually to be the dj in the locker room that's all he's gonna do that's it he's got nothing else to do with it um but I don't know. I he signed a, a minor league deal with the Ice Hogs, so I that leads me to believe that somebody on the Ice Hogs is either going to end up shooting up or is on their way out. Which is, I feel like that's kind of shitty to part ways with somebody just because somebody like Chris Versteeg is coming in to be a a leadership type role. I guess. I mean, if I was a guy that got shipped out, and it's because Chris Versteeg is there for a year to be a leader, I'd be like, all right, well, fuck off. I guess it really didn't mean too much. Yeah, but, I mean, Rockford had a hard time scoring goals this year. So, I mean, bringing in a little veteran presence like that. Um, I know their offense is kind of weak. They, their, our development down there needs to step up majorly. So, if it's somebody that's shipping off, it's going to probably be a guy that was performing as is. Well, it was a, a – Weird year for them as well, because, I mean, a lot of people, you know, you think about the Blackhawks and the coaching situation that they went through and how it was hard for them to kind of 
regroup with the new coach and everything like that. Rockford had to go through the exact same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, I didn't really think about that until actually a couple of weeks ago when they said that they just resigned uh, their new coach. I think his name is uh, uh, Daryl King. I think. Don't hold me to uh, that. I'm gonna look yeah, it up right I now. So I'll look it up. King is uh, for sure the last name. I'm almost positive on that, but. In any case, I mean, Rockford kind of went through the same thing the Hawks did this year in terms of having to adjust to a brand new coach. Derek so, King. Derek King? Yeah. God, that was close. Damn it. It's all right. Um, It'll be okay. Yeah, you know. But, I mean, in any case, um, you know, they, they missed the playoffs by, I think, just a hair this past year, uh, kind of the same way that the Hawks were, were going on. So, um, And that was a year after they went on ridiculous run to the conference final yeah they like almost didn't lose a game Mm -hmm. so um but yeah um that's really it for 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 hawks like you guys have anything else no really i'm just kind of looking at like ice hogs roster right now i mean it's nothing like like who would you miss (laughs) yeah no like the oldest player is like Andreas Martinson or like Jordan Schrader. Well, here's the other thing, though. A lot of the guys that probably should be on that team right now, like playing top minutes, were playing for the Hawks this year, and yeah. probably shouldn't have been. You know. True. So maybe they get sent back down. Who knows? Yeah. But, Shit, maybe we I mean, don't trade that pick. <laughs> Got to rebuild our fucking system. What's that? So maybe we don't trade that pick. We got to rebuild our system a little bit. I mean, the system's fine. I mean, we still got stuff coming up and that that's not with Rockford. Yeah, you know, they're true. still playing juniors right now. So, I mean, I'm not too worried about that. You know? Yeah, I mean, we got like we got some good good prospects still in the works. Yeah, I'm not worried. You can't, I'm not worried. Like a full team of like prospects in the AHL just to be ready to be brought up whenever they're whenever we feel like it. Like, mm-hmm. you kind of just have to have like a, a select few that are like the ones you're looking for. <laughs> well, I guess okay. Talking about that, one more thing for Hot Stock. Then um, it was reported that Evan Barrett is going to go for his junior year at Penn State as well. So um, I think that's the right move for him. Oh yeah. Uh, same thing with like kind of going the same route as uh, Ian Mitchell. Go. They're not gonna. Yeah. They're not gonna make the big club. Let them, you know, keep playing college hockey. Let them get that little experience going. Yeah. Much better development for them to stay playing in college rather than coming to the pros and not being prepared. You know. Yeah. Taking that extra year with college. I mean, going in, they're still young. You know, going kids going into his junior year right now in college. So. You know, I mean, he's still got a lot of time to, to develop and, and figure his life out. And he's already a beast. So, I mean, it could only be good for him. Dude, we're going to be so good in a couple of years. Man. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what Stan does this offseason. <laughs> That'll be a, a huge, huge point in what direction the Hawks are going to end up going in. So. Got my Stan, Stan the Clown shirt ready to bust it out to wear for the first time mm-hmm. as soon as he makes that stupid move. Is the move going to be as stupid as the food man you got going on right now? Dude, okay, so the story with that is <laughs> I started shaving and I was fucking around with it and my fucking razor died and I didn't have any batteries. So as soon as we're done recording here, I got to go get more batteries so I can fucking finish shaving. <laughs> You're actually going to go out in public? Yeah. Oh my God. Do you Do you... First, shave the Fu Manchu and then clean it up. Like you shape it into something else and then keep going. Is I I was I was bored last night, so that's what I was doing. Okay, because like usually, like when I shave, I just kind of go from like one side to the other, and like I would probably end up with like half a beard. But <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I guess you just have fun with it while you're doing it. <laughs> That's a that's a big fear of mine. So I'll do like I'll do the sides first, so then I'll just be left with like the goat, and then I'll do like I'll do this to get the Fu Manchu, and then I'll do the sides so I just have a muzzy, and then I'll just go inwards from there. So for that a, way I don't look like an idiot. So we'll call it the chaplain. You you go for the chaplain. 
Japlin, the Hitler, whichever one you want. Okay. To <laughs> See, now if I wouldn't be going to public if I ended up with the with the Hitler, but you know. <laughs> We would have to postpone this. Yeah. <laughs> Adolf Jerem. Oh, God. Um, Jesus. Yeah. Sorry. Too far? Was that it? <laughs> the line. There's a line. We don't, yeah. we don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's... Um, so last episode, I talked about uh, uh, the Miller show a little bit and how much fun that that was. Um, it was fun for me, especially since uh, going there is a time for me to hang out with a bunch of my old army buddies. So um, it was an incredible time. It really was. There's about, uh, I'll say maybe like 15 to, to 18 players. So it was a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent turnout. We even passed, uh, we even passed our goal uh, for money raised. So nice. um, it was really, really a, a, an awesome event. Um, <laughs> except for one minor uh, incident. Um, one of the guys uh, that I used to play with, his name is Anthony Andres. Um, uh, there's, there's, he, uh, he took a two hand to the nose on accident. So what happened was he was playing defense. Yeah. He was playing defense and the guy was skating down the left wing side and he went to cut to the middle and bring his arms over. But instead of bringing it over, he just went and baseball <sighs> swing to Durr's nose and it all, like, immediately just started to gush out and everything like that. So it's coming all over the ice and he's like skating off the ice, just catching blood in his glove. So I guess Wait, it, was uh, a, it was a failed windmill. <laughs> yeah. So he went to come op- up and over, but instead of coming up and over, he just went whoop, pow and Where's like Boulders karate chopped him in the face. So oh. quick, quick question too: yeah. was was this uh, Froze Monsters or was this more down to business Ders? Uh, he only had like a, a beer in him, okay. so it wasn't anything crazy. Yeah. Um, but we walk in the locker room after the game, and he's got a band aid on his nose, and his nose is like crunk. <laughs> over here onto one side so we we're just like oh man that's not great and he's like yeah i'm gonna go to the hospital and we're like come on you're gonna go to the hospital seriously it's gonna be broken another three hours just stay drink a little bit the alcohol <laughs> and I end up helping you come on don't be so soft so he's like guys i look at my face i have to go so he ended up leaving we got a text a couple hours later and he goes so I went to uh, went to the hospital and they said that my nasal cavity is completely shattered and they've never seen a break so bad before. <laughs> Holy shit! He had he had to get emergency quote unquote emergency surgery to open it up and fix it back up again because he wasn't getting enough oxygen coming through his nose. He wasn't being able to breathe correctly through his nose, so he had to get emergency surgery on this thing. And now he's got two big black eyes. I just saw him. Um, Friday. He's got two big black eyes. His nose is, is like he's got a huge gash right here on his nose. It's nasty. Mm. Charity Other hockey. That was a great time. <laughs> <laughs> great time. So We're... excited. Um, but no, it was great to see everybody. Uh, Stephen Coulter actually drove up for the event. He was the one that, uh, that we were uh, raising money for uh, this past year. Um, and uh, he was actually able to make it up, and it was a great time. It was good to see him. He's doing really well. He's actually uh, – he just went through his second bout of uh, of chemo, um, and he's got a full bill of health, so uh, clean bill of health. So awesome. exciting to, to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, and I know Jerem wanted me to, to take a picture with Marty, but I ended up forgetting because um, stuff. Oh, cool. mm. I hate when stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> easy. But, no, it was a great time. It was a great time. We raised a, a, a really decent amount of money. Uh, there was Labatt on tap, as Noli was saying. Uh, the Labatt on tap was flowing. Uh, good food. Uh, prizes are actually really good, too. Uh, a couple of really nice prizes. I got uh, signed Alex to bring a puck. Um, there was um, a Brent Seabrook signed stick. Um, there was a uh, Patrick Kane signed uh, photo. Uh, a Chris Chelios stick. Um, 
I can't remember what else was there. I think that was it from like signed memorabilia, but it was actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good turnout in terms of prizes and stuff like that. So um, thanks to Marty for always putting that on every year and for coming on the show, talking about it. Uh, I'll be there next year again, for sure. Thanks for talking about it. Yeah. Um, hey, shall talk. Okay. Before we get into playoffs, let's talk uh, Stevie Iserman. Oh, hell yeah. Back with Detroit. I am so shocked that this has happened. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He's kidding. This is... It's too early. Oh. I'm kidding. It's a yoke. <laughs> yeah, it's too, it's too early to be kidding. Figure it out, Jerem. <sighs> um, I... So I know he announced that he was going to be leaving the Lightning at the beginning of the year, which is fine. But I feel like you kind of got to read the room a little bit, you know, after getting swept by the number 16 seed in the playoffs and your team really didn't look all that good. Uh, and literally two days later, you're like, Hey, I'm with another team now. Thanks. Thanks for, thanks for what you did. That was, that was awesome. Like maybe wait, wait a hot minute so that like everything kind of dissipates before you're just like, Ooh, you guys suck. You got swept. I'm going to go to Detroit instead. I'm going to, I'm gonna hitchhike it over there. Thanks, though. No, I, I mean, think they, I think he should have announced it the second the 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 final horn went on Game Four. They, he and just, he just goes up on the jumbotron at did. Nationwide Arena. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, hey, I'm going to Detroit now. Like he just takes his like suit off, and then underneath is just a Detroit Red Wings shirt, <laughs> and he's just like. A fool. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I knew this was gonna happen all along. Finds the only telephone booth left. He's like Superman, just boom. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I think, I think he's going to be good with the wings, though. I think he's going to end up taking what they've got because they've got a good nucleus, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, and I feel like he can do the job at, at bringing them back to what they used to be. Yeah, but here, here's the problem. I'm looking at their cap friendly right now. <laughs> their final cap hit for the year was 86 million. Mm. It's only supposed to go up to about eighty three this year, and they have three UFAs coming for this season. It's okay. CBY is uh pretty good at managing the cap. It might they might take a minute to get back to like being good, but I mean, look at what he did in Tampa Bay. Like. Made some magic happen. He struck gold with a lot of prospects and stuff like that too. So, oh yeah, but my my thing I'm saying is though to build it back up. My whole thing though is if you got yeah, you're gonna have to tear this down. But what they have, in what they have in cap hits, it's so much like garbage. <clears throat> what are they like? You know, who are they gonna get to take some of these guys? Like. Mm. I mean, it helps Cronwall's up this year, and he'll probably – he might end up retiring. Yeah. Good. But then it's like Thomas Vanek was there for – he only signed a 3 million. Cronwall's a 4, 4.75 mil. And then the other guy is Luke uh, Wodkowski, and he was uh, 750 grand. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not getting much relief by just those guys leaving. Yeah, and it doesn't help that, like, I mean, there's well, still, I don't know what's, what's going on here. <laughs> well, take a look. He started with Tampa Bay in the 2010-2011 season. That was his first full year with Tampa. And that was yeah. the year that they ended up kind of battling their way all the way to the conference final um, against um, Boston. Boston. Um they probably shouldn't have been there, but with what he did in the off season, and then he, he also picked up Dwayne Rolls at midway through the year. And he ended up being like their backbone for that playoff run. Once again, Dwayne Rolls is a gamer, but that's different straight for a different day. Um, but it, that was his first year with Tampa and they really didn't have that much to work with either. So, I mean, it all depends on kind of how he's going to go into the off season and, the free agent market is going to be huge this off season. I know they don't have too much money, but yeah. 
that free agent market is going to be huge this year. So if he could trade off maybe a couple big contracts, yeah. um, that could end up being an option for them too. Well, they also get like a, a mil and a half because Gustav Nyquist, they retain salary on. It kind of sucks. They're still paying out like Steven Weiss. Yeah. They bought him out. They bought like, out Xavier I mean, people... Olet, out, Olet out too, and he's an RFA. Like, he's a young kid. What in the fuck? Like, have you ever heard of that? <laughs> but, like, they also don't have to sign anybody this year. Like, unless you want Vanek back or you want Cronwall or, like, Luke Witkowski back. Like, they don't have to sign anyone. But do you do they want them back, though? I mean, I'm sh- surely there are better options out there. I think if you're CBY, you've seen that he's gone younger with Tampa. Like, he doesn't really sign, like, older guys unless he's in that position to, like, make a cup run and then, like, make trades with New York Rangers and get everyone from their team to come over. <laughs> 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 like, I mean, he's not afraid to move guys, too, because, like, you've seen, like, he moved Marty St. Louis out of Tampa Bay at one point, and, like, he'll he'll just pull the trigger on certain things like if they if he wants to like i'm sure he'll find a suitor for like justin abdulkader or like any one of these guys that like like darren helm or something like that too or like Mm -hmm. like franz nielsen like he'll probably he would be willing to like like put it out there because i mean detroit's gonna love him if he just goes hey stick with me for the next like four years i gotta do some shit and then we'll be back as like stanley cup contenders and everybody like all right, cool. And then he retains half salary on like several different guys to bring in young talent or something like that. And like, it just like goes downhill, but like he can build it back up like even better than it is. It's so good that Larkin is only 22 years old. And you're not yeah, really going to be wasting him. Yeah, he's he's filthy. Fucking D boss. How awesome is it though for these young guys on the Red Wings to be able to. If, like if they're struggling with something to be able to go to the general manager and be like, mm, I wonder if I could talk to Steve Eisenman about being a Detroit Red Wing and like <laughs> some of the issues like I'm like, what, what better person is there to talk to about that? Yeah. Jeez. I mean, I think one of my other favorite things now too, is like we're growing up in the nineties and watching hockey, you watch Joe Sackick and Steve Eisenman and now they're the GMs of their teams. <laughs> it's just yeah. kind of like, I hope there's like a small rivalry that like reignites because they're the GMs. They just be like, it's some random right. game in Detroit against Colorado, and Steve Eisman goes to the locker room. He's like, "Hey, fucking kill them!" It's just like, <laughs> okay, Steve, you are whatever you want. <laughs> some random game in January it doesn't even matter. Yeah, <laughs> they just I all of a sudden. That. Oh man, can you imagine if like Detroit and Colorado would, like started meeting up in like the early 2020s or like mid 2020s, like in the Stanley Cup final, and it's just like they're both the GM still, and it's just like, <laughs> oh my god, this is fucking insane. <laughs> Starting fights up at the press box. <laughs> they bring back like fucking. I'll be there for it. Uh, they bring back like Mike Vernon and like Chris Osgood. <laughs> just... Actually. Happen. <laughs> <laughs> the pregame, the pregame uh, video and everything like that is literally just a remake of everybody in the brawl from the playoffs. That's all they're doing. It's just re- <laughs> of them right now, though. They're all old. They have like canes. Oh, uh, I was imagining like it's like them in like Anchorman, where they just like, walk <laughs> up on the street. <laughs> <and> like, <gasps> just... yes. Como estas, bitches? <laughs> Uh, they they also have ten draft picks this this year. Whew. Three like, three round twos. He's gonna get rid of some of those. Shit, I completely forgot they have Philip Zadina too. Mm-hmm. He'd be filthy as a goal scorer. He, he only played what like a, like ten twenty games with them this year, or did he play full season? No, he no. didn't. He got called towards the end. He only played his nine games. It was his, uh, yeah. he's still in juniors. That's what I thought. At least I'm pretty positive he's in juniors. Where the hell's his stats? No, I thought he was in the A. Oh, no, he went, yeah, never mind. He only played nine games, but then he went and played in Grand Rapids. I forgot. He came from the, oh, or, yeah. So here it is. He was on Halifax when he got drafted. Halifax. And then, uh, he played for the Czech Republic, uh, like, world junior under 20 team. 
but it was in Grand Rapids this whole season. I don't know. But I still just love the fact that he was just like going to fill everybody's nets that didn't choose him. It's like, yes, <laughs> do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Give me, give me it all. That should be interesting what Stevie Y does with uh, this off season and kind of the, the route that he chooses to take, because it's not going to be immediate with the wings like it was with the lightning. Uh, if it is, I mean, give Stevie Y all the money. Um, but um, it'll definitely be interesting to see him try and bring that, uh, that team back to its former glory. So um, a couple of awards were announced. Uh, well, nominees for awards. Um, rookie of the Year and uh, Coach of the Year nominees were announced for Rookie of the Year. Uh, Jordan Bennington out of St. Louis uh, obviously took that team from the trash compactor that it was and made it a polished turd. Um, <laughs> hey, thanks. Yeah, I like that. That was good. Yeah. Um, Elias Pedersen out in Vancouver, who was monstrous for them all year long. I've never seen somebody so skinny have a harder shot. Um, oh, yeah. He's like oh a my God. It's incredible. He rips. Uh, and uh, Rasmus Dahlin from Buffalo, defenseman from Buffalo. So I think going into the season, I think Dahlin was kind of the, the favorite. Yeah. To uh, to win the rookie of the year. And then Pedersen just came out of nowhere and lit it up. Yeah, Pedersen was just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. There's no way he doesn't win this. I don't know, to be quite honest with you. I don't know. I think there's a solid chance that Bennington might actually come and steal this one. Uh, just because yeah. of, of how good he was. I wouldn't agree with it necessarily. But I also think that Pedersen missing a pretty decent chunk of games due to energy injury. I think he missed 11 games. He missed 11 games? That's I like, thought it was more than that. No, he only missed 11 games. Like, if you're going to say he missed a decent amount of games, like, I mean, Jordan Bennington didn't play, like, the first yeah, half of the season. January, right. Yeah. So, like, I mean, he's been doing great. But it's such a small sample size, you know? Like, if he was started the season with them, like, who knows if it's, like – wow, he's so great, or if he, like, drops back down, comes back to earth, and, like, can't handle the whole season. You never know. Yeah, but to be fair, his small yeah. sample side also goes from when they were in last place in the NHL all the way to bringing them to round two of the playoffs. But is that just on him, though? Because the team kind of came together and started scoring more goals, too. Ever he definitely – like, I mean, he yeah, definitely I helps. Think, <laughs> I think – so the fight happened. Right yeah. between Bortuzzo and um, Sanford, yes, and Sanford. Um, that was step number one. Step number two was finding a goaltender that you can actually trust. Oh, you mean one that can just make saves? Exactly. Like <laughs> Jake Allen couldn't do anything. Couldn't do anything. And Chad Johnson, he's not a terrible backup option, but he also ended up getting injured. So, you know. He couldn't really even take over for that number one role. And to Jordan Bennington, who just out of nowhere started lighting things up. He's uh, Andrew Hammond, number two. How did that end up working out? Yeah. All right. Let's see if that ends up working out that way, too. Fingers with, uh, crossed. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, I don't even think he's in the show anymore. Uh, I mean, what was the last time we he saw him? He's back up somewhere. He got traded to Colorado, yeah. I thought. Let's... Yeah, and he's a huge backup. Where is Andrew Hammond? He got traded to Colorado, but then he was assigned back to Ottawa's farm system. Like, he was put on loan to them. He, yeah, I don't know. He was on the Wild, <laughs> apparently, in their, uh, on their AHL team. When the hell did that happen? Uh, this year. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Wow. Good to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you... anyway, moving on. To, I'm going to butcher uh, this guy's name real quick, but, um, Miro Heskinen? Heskinen. 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 Do you yeah. think he got a huge snub? I mean, he played. And Tyler Tegg was not too happy about it on, uh, on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tyler? He threw out a tweet out there that was just like dot dot dot, and then the emoji with like the thinking face. Hmm. Yeah, yeah I mean, 
he he's definitely like I know when I watched the Hawks play Dallas, that kid was like very noticeable. Like he is not afraid to skate that puck up the ice, and he is quick, mm-hmm. and he is defensively great too. Still, which is like I'm like jealous. Like he was a. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I don't know. He was drafted the same year as uh, Nolan Patrick and Nico Hiche, right? Yeah, he was third overall. Third overall. I mean, honestly, like if he keeps this up, he I think he might end up being like one of the better or like probably the best pick out of that draft. Yeah, because he just looks like a veteran already. Like it's kind of crazy. NHL is going to be so good with (laughs) this young talent, man. Uh Holy shit! Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really really fun to watch in a couple of years here. Um, the other one that was announced was Coach of the Year, um, and for Coach of the Year, I lost my pain. It was Barry Trotz. Uh, uh, thank you, Barry Trotz. John uh, Cooper, Craig Berube from St. Louis, and uh, John Cooper. Uh, clearly. Once again, playoffs do not matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do not. No, no, they do not. Um, probably going to end up going to Cooper here. Uh, if we're going to if we're gonna call it. I mean, record-breaking I'm, season, I'm very trots, but if you're looking at it from just a, a statistical standpoint, the team that John Cooper was able to put together and to get as many points as they did, he's probably going to end up winning it. But also you could look at it as – Barry Trotz really took that team from nothing, literally nothing. All they had was Barzil. Yeah. I mean, they also went from having like a terrible defense to just adding a goaltender and then adding Barry Trotz and becoming William M. Jennings winning team, like least goals against in the league. Like he, we all know how defensive minded Barry Trotz is. And like, it just goes to show it does not matter what team he's coaching. They're going to be insanely fucking good on defense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I don't know. I think there's a there's a chance that it could end up just going to John Cooper just because of what they did in the uh, so in the regular season. It's tough about that one too because yeah. it's like he that team was expected to be good, expected to do all this stuff. Even the same yeah. thing with St. Louis. I mean, I know they started off slow and wasn't, but they that was a team that going into the season was expected to be top dog and all that. But like you said, Trots and the Islanders, that was fucking magical. Yeah. Well, yeah, and kind of lost in the shuffle there is Craig Berube with uh, with St. Louis. Um, I mean, he's a huge reason that they ended up making the playoffs as well. Yeah. As soon as they canned Mike Yo, he took over. And yeah. you uh, – <laughs> um, he took over, and, and they just kind of never looked back, you know? So this, this is another category that as well. This is another category that it could have been exactly. you could have had so many different coaches up for this award. I mean, yeah. a lot of the teams that didn't make the playoffs, but holy shit, like Arizona, Rick Tockett, what he did there to get those guys there, Claude Julian bringing Montreal way back before they were expected to, Rob Bringamore, um yeah, and Bill Peters, Rob what he did with Calgary. I mean, there were yeah. so many guys that could have been nominated for this. Um, I think they got it right, though. I think those four, uh, those Trotz is going to be – should be the winner. Yeah. I mean, if you take – even if you take, like, playoffs into consideration, which they won't, like, I would – I would rather have, like, I don't know, Torts or Rod the Bod in there because, like, Rod Brandmore leads Carolina to like the playoffs for the first time in ten years and gets them past the Stanley the Cup defending champions. Like that's insane. Like oh, what a series that was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, well, it was an incredible series all the way through. And well, I feel like a lot of people didn't watch that series. Yeah, they slept on Carolina. There was a uh, like tweets about people just being like, "Yeah, you know, it must be a second round buy for the Washington Capitals." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yep. They got to buy for the rest of the playoffs as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, Carolina plays today 
against the uh, the Islanders. And what a first game that was. Oh, my God. An absolute goalie battle to the end. I wasn't able to watch the game. But I, get, like, I get updates when, like, the Islanders score because I follow them because I like, I like Barzell. And I was like, man, my phone must be broken. Like, there's nothing going on. And then I look and I'm like, huh, it's in overtime, 0-0. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, are you saying <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. It was a damn good game. It was a damn good game. Both goaltenders made some unreal saves. Um, and I got to tell you, 0 1 in the Barclay Center. Mm. Just saying. Going to be 0 2. Just saying. Hey, you know, first mm. loss in the playoffs, though, so that's not too bad. No. No. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a really tight game. Really. Um, really well played actually it was really um it wasn't very open there were a couple of different opportunities where there were some breakaways or some you know backdoor two-on-one plays but other than that it was pretty defensively sound all the way through so i mean i feel like that's the kind of game that we're going to end up seeing for the remainder of the series i hope so that's gonna be an exciting yeah. watch that's not gonna i don't feel that's like gonna... there's much hatred going on in that series and i mean what carolina yeah end up possibly getting uh, Svechnikov back and maybe Furlan back later in the series too. So see if that makes an impact. I think it, um, the Hurricanes are going to come down to earth a little bit more though. I think they're riding such a high, for, high from that game seven too. Yeah, so I think that... Yeah, they just almost had the it. same situation like Boston and Columbus. You yeah. know, Boston was coming off that high from game seven, took Columbus by surprise. It was a little bit more evenly matched with Carolina and, and the Islanders, but yeah, um, you know, um, it still kind of came out as the same result. Do you think we see similar things happen just because both teams either swept or went to Game Seven in those like series? Mm-hmm. It's probably going to end up being just about the same thing. Yeah, you know, um, Islanders obviously don't want to go down to nothing going into Carolina. Carolina has proven to be a war zone almost. You know, yeah. I mean, very hard to beat them in their own building in the playoffs. So, um, but yeah, today's going to end up being a pretty big game for them, uh, for uh, for the Islanders. Hopefully, they come out of there even. So, um, the other game on tonight, San Jose and Colorado. Surprisingly, San Jose took Game One. I mean, you can say it just like how you said the other like Game 7 series is maybe San Jose was just still riding that high of the most incredible <laughs> third period in overtime I've ever seen. Like, uh, yeah, they were just – they're buzzing. Brett Burns yeah. had, what, well, four points that game? Mm. Yeah. Crazy. Well, the thing about that game, though, that was interesting, though, was the Avalanche had the lead twice, and they gave it up twice. To the Sharks, so they went up early, one nothing. Then it was tied one one. Then it was two to one abs, and then the Sharks tied it two two, and then they made it three two. And I believe they also made it four to two before. Yeah, they scored. They San five. Jose after Colorado scored in the second. Um, San Jose went on to score four unanswered, including three yeah. in the second. Yeah, so pretty good effort there from. Uh, from the Sharks against a Colorado team that once they get up, they don't necessarily look back. You know, they usually hold on to that lead. So, uh, Jumbo getting one, too. I bet that felt good for good old Jumbo Joe. Oh, absolutely. I mean, any time that he does anything in the playoffs, I'm sure he's just, like, getting a little bit younger. Yeah. Um, you guys say something real quick, totally off topic with this. I was looking at something on Instagram and it was like ranking the top 10 playoff beards so far. And they had Burns and Jumbo Joe one, two. That's not fair. They've had that beard the entire year. Yeah. Those aren't playoff beards. Yeah. I'm t- um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like, I'm just, I saw that I'm like, cause I'm looking at the pictures, like, I'm like the scoring summary. I'm just like, that, that bugged me. Stupid little shit like that bugs me. It's true. Yeah, I mean, they've had those beards for a while, but still, they're they're glorious. Yeah. Can't deny it. Yeah, I mean, those are uh, skin body issue. <laughs> those are some beards. That... Oh, the body issue? Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about that. Um, could we talk about 
um, how disgusting Kevin LeBanc is. Oh, God. Oh, is Kevin Money in LeBanc? Oh, <laughs> God. That goal that he scored was incredible. He just went right through Miko Rotten and just went, Whoop. nope, that's mine. Thank you very much. And then ripped it. Are you mm. kidding? Where is this kid coming from? <laughs> He's making a name for himself in the playoffs right now. God. He's got oh, three goals, three assists in eight games. Perfect. Wait, hold on. Let's go back to uh, San Jose's cap friendly. And I want to see what his contract looks oh. like, how much trouble they are in. <laughs> because if he needs a new contract soon, yikes. That is not going to be helpful for them. No. <laughs> They're sitting up there like, <laughs> yeah. We'll like, like, oh, Kevin shit. Money in LeBanc is about to get paid. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we'll play sitting up in the press box going stop scoring yeah stop. like they gotta be like yeah 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 goal and then they're like oh shit he's gotta get so paid he's 23 <laughs> and it's his last year of his entry level contract so if that gives you an idea where his <laughs> money is right now less than a mil and he's putting hilarious. up points hilarious yeah go get him Stan um <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> That game will be on uh, later on tonight, mm-hmm. game two, uh, between Colorado and San Jose. Um, uh, my main question going into that uh, into that series was going to be Marty Jones, and he actually looked pretty pretty decent in game one. Uh, a couple not-so-great plays from him, but, you know, better than what was going on before. Yeah, yeah. If San Jose. Also, you got to look out for Nate McKinnon because – Man, oh man, is he going to be hard to control for a whole series? I know. Over and over again. I think that guy's going to be just a, a terrorizer for this entire playoffs. Yeah. Jeremy, what were you going to say? I was going to say, as long as San Jose keeps putting up points like this, I mean, I don't think Jones is going to be as huge of a factor. Um, obviously, he is, but I mean, today, this game tonight's going to really give us the clear picture of where this series is going. Yeah. Well, I I don't think Grubauer also played at his very best either in game one. So seeing him at his best, yeah, is probably not going to end up playing out so well for for San Jose. So we'll see what happens tonight. Um, last night, Saturday night, a couple of really good hockey games. Uh, in the afternoon, we had Dallas and St. Louis, and Dallas came out like gangbusters. A couple highlight reel goals, three goals in the first period, ended up buckling down, holding uh, holding down the fort, and won the game three to two. Um, But a big, big win for Dallas going home, split, now technically have home ice advantage. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for that series because I just want St. Louis to lose. Mm -hmm. All day long. And your buddy, your buddy, Ben Bishop, with an incredible save, played that bounce off the boards real bad. I don't know what he was thinking there. Doesn't matter. Made played the, the bounce off the boards. Yeah. He, he, you know, it's uh, controlled chaos, I'm pretty sure is what it was. Absolutely. Your best Hasha compression. So, <laughs> yeah. It looked like he kind of hurt himself a little bit, too, because he ended up making another save after that, and he covered up the puck. And he kind of put his head down on the ground. I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. He contorted himself in a weird way. No, 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 no. Yeah, but I think it was. I think it was still. Yeah, is it almost time for a Ben Bishop injury? <laughs> no, conference final. That's what oh, happened. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's when the timeline is. He's got to play in the playoffs on one leg at some point. <laughs> Same with Carlson. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that one's going back to Dallas. That should be a good one uh, to continue to follow. Uh, Dallas is. They were rocking actually in that building this uh, this this past round, the first round. I was kind of surprised to see how into it they were. I forgot what Dallas is like during playoff time. Yeah, so did they. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I did see a tweet. Um, somebody was downtown Dallas. I forgot who it was, uh, but they said there's only one banner hanging up at the airport. That says anything about the stars being in the postseason and like around town and around the arena, there's nothing. There is nothing that's like promoting them being in the playoffs at all. Oh wow. Maybe because they didn't expect to like go far? I don't know. They're in the second round. Like do something. I don't know, but that's 
that kind of sucks. Like, <laughs> I would be upset about that if I was on Dallas, but whatever. Plus, all you got to do is just put Tyler Sagan's face everywhere, and everybody would be like, who is that yeah. guy? <laughs> uh, yeah, wherever he is, I want to see him. And they're like, well, he plays for the Dallas Stars, and we're in the playoffs. And they're like, I don't even care. How do I get close to him? And <laughs> Same boom. thing, though. Stadium filled. <laughs> put up a, a billboard of, of him with the, uh, the ESPN body. The issue with the rubber ducky right in front of his junk. That's all they got to do. <laughs> well, you want to see this guy come to the American Airlines Center? Yeah, we got we got plenty more where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> rubber duckies for everybody. Um, game of the night in the series, the best series by far, is Boston Columbus. Mm. Oh baby, by far, that is going to be a war. That is going to be an absolute war all the way through. It's really taken over too for Vegas, San Jose for like the war of words too. Like these guys are just fucking chirping the shit out of each other. Mm. I like uh, the little subplot between Cam Atkinson and uh, Brad Marchand. Oh, what a dick. Brad Marchand stepped on his stick and broke his blade. And after the game, Cam Atkinson uh, goes, I'm accept- I'm expecting him to pay me back in cash, straight cash. He's like $300 cash only. Yeah. That's all I'm accepting. Um, no, but I love it, though. I'm, I'm all for it. I think I it's- did you see that clip of the TSN like reporter? That was like did like a pregame talk with like Brad Marchand and then like asked him about like David Pasternak. And then he, his next question was, so, uh, did you get that skate blade sharpened from last game? <laughs> and and Marshawn just goes, yep, it skates away. Like, right away. Well, did you hear when they asked him about the whole stick stomp? He's like, yeah, man, he was just trying to dull my blade, which I thought was kind of shitty of him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he knows about it. Like, it was a joke. I think he just skated away from that, like, question because it was pregame. And yeah. Like, it's not time to fucking joke around right now, you I know, f- like. I fucking hate Marchant, but I fucking, like, love him, like, off ice, too, though. Like, all the little shit he does, his social media with um, Tory Krug, and yeah, all this. Tory Krug being funny. Yeah, no, fair. I'm never going to accept Brad Marchant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, it's so funny. Uh, it's so annoying. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Um, Artemi Panarin coming up big that game, though, huh? Yeah. Three oh, points. Two goals. How about that second goal? Terrible angle. Hits the back bar and it comes right out. Oh, he's not a playoff player. Incredible, incredible shot by Artemi. And what a terrible turnover by Charlie Coyle behind the goal line. Just a backhand blind pass through the middle. What are you doing? Right onto the stick of Seth Jones. He's lucky that Jones passed it off and didn't just tee it up right there. Mm. And Seth Jones is playing unreal. He almost played like 40 minutes of time on ice in that game, too. He had like 30-something. It was like, oh, my God. They were talking about that uh, on NBC. They were like, yeah, he's just, he's out there every other shift. Like, Torch is not holding back on Seth Jones at all. Yeah. And he was on the ice for the for the game-winning power play goal. Yeah, I was going to say he, he could have gotten, like, I mean, probably like a third assist if they had that. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's – he is everywhere, and he's just flying too. Mm-hmm. And how about uh, Duchesne? God, that that trade's starting to look a little bit better now, isn't it? Yeah, get some playoff hockey in, you know. Mm-hmm. Four goals, four assists, and six games for him. He's a plus five. Yeah. Mm. And he almost scored like ten seconds before the two. It went right off the end of his stick, and he just missed the net. Yeah, and I was sitting there on our couch, and I was like, "Oh my god, he's got to bury that!" And then, ten seconds later, yeah, like towards, I mean, even the like later half of that third period, like as it's winding down, there was so many chances for both teams, and then overtime was just so many chances. It was just like, I know. "Oh my god, when is it going to happen?" <laughs> as great as it is that the Blue Jackets won, Sergei Bobrovsky deserves some sort of a Russian hooker or something mm-hmm. for his performance. Yep. He was incredible. Yeah. Top cop still on the case. Oh, my God. A couple of those saves that he made just backdoor plays, that that one backdoor one-timer, the blocker save he made on uh, Bergeron. Yeah. Bergeron couldn't believe he didn't score. Yeah. 
And you never really see Bergeron act that way where he's just like oh, throws the head back. That's, that's how you know you got he got you good. That's that playoff hockey goaltending that you need like so badly. Did you guys notice that uh Ryan Dezingle didn't even play? Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was uh he was replaced by Alexander Wenberg, who I didn't even know wasn't even playing in the playoffs at this point. Oh gosh, he's been terrible all year long. Yeah, he only had like 25. I looked it up yesterday. I was too. Like, he went and only had like 25 points this season. But like two years ago, he put up like 50. Two goals, 23 assists this season. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And it's just like, oh man. Like, has Dezing- like, has Dezingle been that bad? Was, no, Dezingle just doesn't have a point in the playoffs right now. So he is like with like Columbus like tearing up like Tampa Bay and then the first game against Boston, like. I think he was just, like, switching something up a little bit. But, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe uh, maybe we'll get in game three. Yeah, because I saw, I saw Winberg in there, and I was like, I don't think I've seen Winberg this entire playoff. Nope, that was his first game. Crazy. Interesting. He had no points, no plus minus, no pims, no shots on goal, one hit, three blocks. <laughs> Shit, game but three. But they won, so he's probably gonna play the next game. Game and three is until Tuesday. Tonight? Game three is on Tuesday. Yeah. What the Isn't fuck? That weird? Wait. Well, there's a lot going on in uh, in Columbus. There's a lot going on at the Nationwide Arena, so you know, got to plan around it. Yeah, it's a hot true. place to be, man. Another one of those situations. Oh shit, we're actually still playing. Fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the second second round is like. Oh my god. Did, uh, the ice by now. Holy shit. Yeah. Speaking of war words, did you uh, see Dubinsky last night after the game? They yeah. uh they asked him, they're like, Oh, yo, you guys are going back home, you know, you gotta be ready for the atmosphere, huh? And they're like, he goes, Yeah, I can tell you this, it's gonna be way louder than Boston was. Mm. <laughs> just like <laughs> I mean Columbus might just be going crazy because they they swept the best team in the league and like the whole town might just be like, what? Yes, we have somebody that's good. I didn't even know about the Blue Jackets. It's awesome. I made a lifelong fan. What? You mean they've been around since 1997 or something like that? Like, oh, crazy. <laughs> they want it? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, the, there were a couple of times that that game almost ended, though, uh, in overtime in the most unceremonious ways. <laughs> the dump in from center ice, I believe – um, it was one of the defensemen. I can't remember who was it on Boston, but it took a sharp. It might have been, yeah, took a sharp right though, about five feet in front of the net, and uh, full sprawl was able to get the glove on it. I don't think I've ever seen a game end that way in playoff overtime. What an awful way to lose a game, though, if that would have gone in. Well, that's what you do in overtime in the playoffs: is throw things at the net. Mm-hmm shit could happen. And that's what they uh, – I remember they were talking about it on the broadcast when it was game seven versus uh, Columbus and Washington – or not Columbus, sorry, Carolina and Washington because it would, you would just see, like, Justin Williams, like, get the puck in the offensive zone, turn around, rip it on net. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. they're just, like, commenting. And like, again, happened to be there. Right. Like, it's, yeah. it's hilarious. Like, anything can happen, especially when, like, the nerves and tension are so high. Like, anything can happen. Anybody can mess up. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> right. And then earlier on in the overtime, Nick Foligno came in on a 2 on one and he had Tuka Rask dead to rights. Tuka, I think he tried to stop, but his blade slid out from underneath him. So he couldn't stop. He just kept on moving off to the right out of the net. And he threw out his glove and Foligno to <sighs> – it was a really weird situation for him to be in because if he kept on moving off to his right – he was going to run right into Zidane Ochoa and get knocked on his ass and not get the shot off. So he had to kind of get it off right, right away, and he just threw it right into Tuka's glove. He had almost an entire net, but he threw it right into Tuka's glove. Yeah, and then he also had an opportunity like late in the third period too where he just ripped it glove side right into his glove. Just like, man. Yeah. Nick Foligno looking for some love in that glove. Yeah. Looking for some love in a glove. But – and that, that's one of those, like, I saw – when I saw he put that in the glove and I was watching the replays, I was sitting there thinking that is something that's going to eat him up alive if they don't win this game. 
Yeah. That's one of those things that you think about it late at night. You're like, God damn it. We could have been tied 1-1 one, 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 going home if I just put the puck in the net. That's also something Boston probably is just like – it's like the save that Holpe made last year against Vegas. Where yeah. Solidified this series for him. It was like a – it was a series-changing save. Like if that was a save and then Boston goes and scores right after that, it's like, oh, call him done because that's over. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. True. True, true, true. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's round so far. Been exciting. I'm yeah. happy with it. There was more more hockey going on because it's been so fucking awesome yeah. to see. I know. This has really been the, like the best playoffs in, in a little bit. 100%. If we can just get 100%. the teams that got, like, kicked out or didn't make the playoffs to just have like their own playoff hockey guy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> that would be great. Just do a like tournament how, for like first overall NCAA pick. Has like their like NCAA bracket, and then there's like the NIT tournament. If we could just like have an NIT tournament with like the of like the hockey teams that didn't make the playoffs, that'd be great. Let's do it. That'd be fantastic. Ugh. that's hilarious. But all right, fellas, uh, today's a big day. Today's a big day for me. It's uh, episode three of uh, of Game of Thrones. Huge battle today. And uh, I'm mentally preparing, so I know none of you guys care. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna watch World of Dance. It's gonna be pretty great. <laughs> and if you think I'm kidding, I fucking love that show. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm kidding? Uh, I actually am not. So, mm. Karen, what are your plans today? What are you watching? I don't know. I'll probably watch. I know I keep talking about I want to restart watching Breaking Bad, so I might do that. Or I can start Game of Thrones because there's no way I'm like going to – because I said I want to wait till it's over. But there's no way I can catch up, so I might as well just start. I mean, yep. or we can watch playoff hockey. That's too. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah, that's <laughs> just a given though. Yeah, I actually got to work today, so I'm going to be yeah. putting the playoff hockey on in the TVs in the other room so I can just see it from the bar that I'm at. I'm just going to be like, all there right. There you go. Oh, shit, 2 o'clock is the first game. Sweet. That's yeah. what I'm watching. Yeah. 2 p.m. game, huh? Not too, not too shabby. Not too shabby. So, all right, fellas, this was fun. This was fun. Early morning, uh, early morning pod. Tanner, have fun at work today. Jerem, oh. let me know if you need to talk about Game of Thrones at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want it. I know you're waiting for it. I guarantee. You, as soon as I tell you I'm starting, you're going to be like, just yes, let's go. Fucking tell me. <laughs> Taking your computer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Fun Epi. Uh fifty six. Gustafson. Uh, presented by Beer League Talk. Oh yeah. No Not big a deal. deal. <laughs> okay. Tune in everybody. We'll uh, we'll talk to you next week. Alright, love ya. Love you guys. Follow the boys on Twitter at WCB Podcast, on Instagram at WCB Podcast, and like them on Facebook, the Windy City Benders Podcast.